Hello again and welcome back to the Gearhead Workshop. Uh, this is going to be uh, part one on the uh, new Mobius kit, the uh, USS Franklin from uh, Star Trek Beyond. And in true fashion around here, we've always got something going on in the background. So uh, we've been kind of working on this guy in between working on other stuff on the channel and uh, client projects. So um, kind of get into what, what we got going on here. Um, I guess you can see in the hopefully in the shot of we've got some of the windows masked up here which I've just done that with some blue painters tape we've got these two pilot lamps up front and the uh, clear part for the uh, Citadel skylight and there's four small marker lamps back here that I've also kind of masked up and we've got the uh, front window for the bridge masked up too and uh, let's see we'll kind of pop this top saucer off and kind of work through what we've got done on this guy um, one thing um, the uh, saucer rim parts um, you've got uh, tabs inside of here that are for lining the saucer and uh, when I put this together and uh, ran a light test on my interior lighting I kind of found out that um, some of the tabs are directly behind uh, some of the rectangular saucer rim windows so we've cut these two tabs here out and the front center tab and half of these tabs and half of the rear tabs to to get them out of the way of our windows so we get all our windows light up pretty even and um, we've got our two uh, white 805 SMDs in here for our nav marker lamps um, I went with uh, just plain white because that's what it looked like to me in the movie it didn't have like a red and a green or any kind of blink animation so we just went with white 805 SMDs in there and we kind of had to trench out a little tiny bit in uh, part of the little raised rim that helps align the saucer wall parts and also the um, problem I had was when I went to put this saucer wall section in with the window insert put in um, it wanted to squash on top of my SMD even though I had recessed it a little tiny bit so I kind of notched out the uh, the glass part. Uh, it wasn't really necessary to hit the saucer wall part but the glass part I notched out a little bit for clearance so the SMD didn't get bumped around in there. And uh, I was showing we masked off all the windows. All the windows I put in here uh, I put them in with Tamiya extra thin and on some of these I've gone back and put a little bit of epoxy around the edge just to make sure they stay in mainly these two guys and on each side of the uh, bridge window and the citadel skylight and the two rear marker lights for behind the citadel and uh, for back here in, the, in this little area I was going to um, use this little room that I made up out of some leftover photo etch and it's kind of a bummer. Um, the room looked pretty good and I've tried it in there and it actually is just a little bit too tall for one to keep the saucer from closing up and after testing it the windows that are back here you just can't really see in there very clearly and I don't want to not use the windows that are in there because they have a little detail molded in and I didn't want to go with uh, you know any other kind of plastic so we're just going to ditch the room and and leave the light back here which I used another white 805 SMD back here which hopefully you can see that little yellow dot there that's just facing downwards right behind where the two windows are in the back and it's going to help illuminate some of the marker lamps back there and we've also got um, the uh, what I'm what they call the J type marker lamps and we've got two more back here uh, the J type we just basically opened up the hole just a tiny bit enough to get the, the 805 SMD to sit down in that hole and the rearmost ones we went in inside of here behind this part and drilled through and then opened it up kind of like a countersink in there so we could seat the SMD in there and, and both of those on both sides have been epoxied in place and I've ran a little bit of tulip over top of those to light block those and uh, let's see I think uh, um, the only other thing with the upper saucer section that comes to mind is I made uh, some little light boxes back here for the uh, the impulse drive which is a wall right here, a small wall here and there's a cross piece right here that I'm going to mount my um, uh, LED on to light the impulse engine which um, those are going to be these new uh, flicker SMDs that uh, Jerry at HDO Model Works has 
we just got those in and uh, there's a couple other things that came in and we'll go over that as we go and uh, I think uh, for the upper saucer that's pretty much it what we got done so far and we'll go on to the lower saucer and the lower saucer um, I did not like the uh, what I call the deformed horseshoe um, stand mount so what we did is uh, we drilled a hole through here for the size of a pretty much like your standard polar lights pole mount uh, which uh, which I don't have that I have a carbon fiber tube but it's the same size I forget what the size right off but we drilled a hole through there and we made up a, a layered block of wood here because you obviously have steps back here in the hole as it, as it goes up from the bottom but we made our block with all the steps in it and uh, drilled in the size of the pole almost all the way through and then drilled a smaller hole here so our pole could butt against that and we bring our wires through and then we epoxy the whole block in place and uh, we've put this rear wall portion in already with the windows in there that I was talking about the kit windows and uh, LED strip lighting um, uh, me and a friend of mine were discussing um, how to evenly light these citadel windows uh, on the lower and the upper saucer because they're kind of far away from center so uh, what I ended up doing is I cut some sprue and uh, put all this stuff in with uh, the Gorilla Super Glue, the Blue Label Gorilla Super Glue and uh, raised these up a little taller to kind of get them in between the lower ones and the, and the upper windows and uh, these ones are pretty much set right at the mid-level of the, uh, the saucer so hopefully we'll get even lighting to all of our outer windows and to these citadel windows and get some bleed over to light some of the other stuff up and uh, I guess you can see too we've got some fiber optics in here which um, the little black spots here I had this stuff pre-light blocked uh, had a problem with the, the first run of putting the fiber optics in and I didn't like it and it didn't come out well so I cut them out and redid them and uh, a lot happier with the second run uh, this is a 0.75 millimeter uh, fiber optic, which actually is pretty much the size of the hole that, that you had to drill out in the little nubs for the thrusters underneath. So that's what we're going to go with, that size. And uh, we've got a, an emitter down in here with a 5 millimeter bright white flat top, which uh, basically is just a piece of heat shrink tube that I put a 5 millimeter in one end and shrunk it and then put all our fiber optics in the other end and shrunk that tight to that and then and locked it in with epoxy and we've epoxied the emitter down in here to keep it kind of low and I also tried to uh, run all the fiber optic underneath of all of our LED strip to kind of cut down on light bleed over into these when they're not going to be on and uh, the plan is to uh, hook up the thrusters on a like a single momentary so when we want to fire the thrusters we just press the momentary button and they come on and uh, let's see the only other thing with this I think is uh, we've had to trench a little tiny bit back here and both pylons for our wires are going to pass up to the nacelles and uh, I think other than that that's just about it for um, for this uh, the only other thing is uh, I did cut some of these tabs off because these were interfering with the windows too these ones up here seemed okay we're gonna double check those but these were definitely in the way so we clipped those off but we could still get our saucer alignment by the step around here and where it lines up with all this stuff and I think that's it for the lower saucer and let's see we'll move on to these rear nacelle caps um, these are the tail cones for the uh, nacelles which they get a little orange bubble that goes in here which I've done that up with some um, some Tamiya clear orange and some clear smoke and several coats to get a, a nice deep orange to it and I uh, hit those on the outside with uh, some Krylon matte clear and uh, I wanted to um, get the light kind of looking good. I've tried a couple of different ways to do it and what I came up with was just making a little light box tube that's going to go up inside of here. I'm not going to shove it all the way in there right now because, yep, there we go. It'll get stuck. <laughs> but anyway, um, we got this cut out in the back for a 5mm LED, which that's going to be 
these guys right here these are five millimeter flicker yellow LEDs also from Jerry at HDA Model Works we're gonna um, probably diffuse these guys which will be either I'll spray them with a frost coat or I'll probably sand them up to diffuse them and we'll mount one in the back of there and uh, the, the two has been light blocked on the outside and the inside and painted white on the inside and on this end here that's going to be facing the bubble that I've cut out a piece of milk jug material and glued that on there with some of the Gorilla Super Glue so we'll end up with the flicker LED in there put our clear bubble in and then shove this guy up in there behind it and hopefully come out with some some good dome lighting and let's see um, I guess I'll show these real quick um, these are the uh, the outer domes for the nacelles. Um, the uh, the stationary fan blade part that goes inside of these, which is the X you're seeing the cross, uh, sprayed those with um, with Tester's Model Master Chrome Silver, and just sat them down in there and took some of the Tester's Clear Window Maker cement and just put a little dot on each tip to lock those in place. They're not under any stress, so they shouldn't go anywhere. And the only thing we've done with these is uh. I've gone in and sprayed on the inside and a little on the outside with some Tamiya clear smoke so these things aren't completely clear. Uh, it just looked like to me they, they weren't completely clear and, and they kind of had a, like a dark kind of look to them so that's what we're going to go with on those. And we sprayed the inner blades with the same chrome silver. And um, next thing we got is, um, let me grab another part here, is uh, this is your forward nacelle cone. It goes on to the nacelle and you've got this disc that goes behind it's a clear part and I've shot this with a mixture of some Tamiya clear yellow and orange and put a light coat of smoke over top of it and on the back we've got a little disc of the milk jug material cut out with a hole so we can pop that on there and it's on there pretty tight it shouldn't go anywhere and we're going to put that in from behind and have our lighting behind that so that ought to look pretty cool and uh, now let's see the only other thing is uh, we need to move on to the cells and these are our nacelles so we've already got these pretty much built up and put together they're not complete yet we got a part that goes on top and our, of course our tail cone the front cone and our dome and everything but um, I'm gonna get a little battery power here and I'll show you what we got going on in here now kind of explain what I what I got going on there and what I had to do to get that um, let's see whoops always got to fiddle with this stuff that's what we got going on so far um, what's in there is a little board that I ordered off of eBay uh, I forget the seller on eBay but they're made by Hobby Kit EU uh, it's called a UFO LED chaser board and the board itself is just a circular board it has a IC chip on it and it has a uh, micro potentiometer that you can change the speed of the animations with and they also have uh, 16 different animation programs that you can set via a button on the board and I've just picked out a, the animation that I like and basically turned the speed all the way down and uh, the boards had to be modified pretty much um, because they're just a little bit too large to fit into Franklin the cells and uh, real quick modifying wise is uh, there was an outer trace ring on the PCB board that that needed to go just so I could grind the board down to get it in here so what we did the ring was running positive power from the center of the board out to the uh, legs of the LEDs so we just found that central power point and uh, jumped wires out to the uh, to the legs of the LEDs so we could get rid of the outer trace ring and after three or four hours of fiddling they finally fit and we got them to work so we just got our wire hanging out here and later on we'll bring our wire up out of a pylon bring it through here tie it in and we're also going to tie in our uh, flicker LED for the tail cone in right here and then we'll just tuck all this inside and put our upper part on the nacelle and that'll be our nacelles and uh let's see i think uh for right now that's just going to be about it on uh part one of uh what we're doing with the uh, mobius franklin over here so uh before i uh ramble on too much more we'll call it quits on this one and uh 
until the next video, whatever that may be on, uh, everybody take care, uh, happy modeling, and peace.